I rarely ever engage with it because it is rarely very fruitful. I'll tell you why. There are about 15 different perspectives to answer this question from 15 different angles and 15 different experts from that perspective will give you their biblical justifications and reasoning. And I, I choose not to engage with this question often because it seems like a lot of people are looking for the general consensus in order to decide what they believe on the matter rather than intimately seeking the Spirit of God. And I will say many are walking in disobedience to the Holy Spirit because they're looking for the general consensus of man. What does this group think about that? What does my favorite influencer say about that? Uh, and we're failing to seek the Spirit of God. And we have a habit of doing that over more controversial topics within the church. So I'm, I don't play that game. I'm going to give you an anecdote about uh, something I experienced and deposit it for you to take to the Lord. But I was invited in to minister to a group of college kids, a pretty sizable group. And I don't go anywhere that the Holy Spirit doesn't green light and permit. I don't speak to whom the Holy Spirit doesn't green light and permit. So I went there on assignment, said yes to the Lord. When I got there, I had a leader who was going to be leading one of the groups for the week or the weekend that I was ministering. And he came up to me before the students had even arrived. And he said, hey, can you provide me with a list of the scriptures that you use to defend you as a woman ministering to the young men here? Because I feel like the young men in my group are going to bring it up. They're going to ask. So I looked at him for a moment and I said, let me pray on it. Let me pray on whether I will provide you a list. He said, well, I know what I believe. I just, you know, want to know how you would defend this and, and be equipped. And so I said, okay, I'll pray. So I went back. Um, and that night, as I was getting ready for bed, the Holy Spirit said, you're not going to provide him a single scripture. Uh, I kind of argue with the Lord a little. I said, well, why not? I understand, you know, he's wanting to be equipped and you know, I can ca carve out this time. He said, no, you're going to tell him this. And I told him this exact thing told him, the Lord has said that I am not going to provide you any scripture. If at the end of these few days, your young men have not encountered the spirit of the living God or learned something new in this time, then I will sit down with them and I'll present them a defense. And he was like, okay, all right, we'll, we'll do it that way. Tell me why during this time of ministry, these few days, there was an outpouring of the Holy Spirit like I had not seen in a long time. These same young men that he was concerned would have questions in response to the Spirit of God moving in power to the prophetic and taught imparted word. These young people were staying up till 3 a.m., 4 a.m., prostrate before the Lord, encountering the Holy Spirit, repenting. There were salvations like we had not seen. There were young people, they had free time built into their schedule after the night of ministry. They would go to the top of the gathering space, the building we were in, laying on their faces, crying out to the Lord, repenting, encountering Jesus. It was next level. The young people were hungering for the word of God, flames of faith lit again. It was so beautiful. And here's the thing. It didn't have anything to do with me and the fact that I was a woman. It had to do with the fact that the eyes of the Lord roams the earth looking for the ones who are willing. And when we give our yes and walk in obedience, I broke from the outline and script, the advised flow of the week of what had been planned to minister exactly what the Holy Spirit said, come what may, if I got in trouble, if I got kicked out, it just didn't matter. We even saw leaders, adults who were encountering God afresh and it didn't have anything to do with me. It had to do with God and what he intended to do for his glory for his honor, for his praise. And we sit over here debating the most 
idiotic things and 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 trying to decide who thinks what and is it okay and you reject and quench the holy spirit that said go preach the good news share the gospel go to the nations and we're like but what if you wear a bra and i certainly couldn't learn under a what some of y'all need to be careful that you do not resist, quench, or even blaspheme the Holy Spirit because you've made an idol out of the vessel it's coming from. You have made idolatry out of man and woman versus knowing the Spirit. I'm going to repeat that again for some of y'all who didn't hear in the back. Some of you need to be careful that you are not blaspheming and rejecting the Holy Spirit because you are practicing idolatry concerning the vessel the Lord is working through. Not a single one of those boys came up at the end of camp saying, I, didn't, I couldn't learn from you, you have hips. And instead they came up repenting of pornography, of strongholds in their life, of serious spiritual issues. They came up praising God because they were filled with the fire of the Holy Spirit. The leader himself couldn't even find the words to explain what the Lord was doing. And so what I want to say to all of you, if someone asks you to justify this, allow instead the Lord to justify his works through your life and through your faithfulness. And just let that be the answer.